You are looking at the vacuum fluorescent display on a Yamaha MT8X2 and it wasn't lighting and although it's pretty obvious what that is now that I'm fiddling with these two detached pins over here on the right actually these were right flush up against the glass there and for a long time I didn't notice that that was the problem so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how these work because I didn't know until I had to troubleshoot this and the process that I went to in order to eventually notice that these pins were detached. I have a little bit of concern about my ability to reattach these pins. This is glass. The amount of metal that's protruding out of the glass there is very small and I need to find a way to solder that back on without applying so much heat to this that the glass shatters. So we'll see whether I can recover this or not. I've prepared this crude diagram in Procreate on my iPad just to demonstrate a very rough idea of how this technology works. As I go through this diagram, I will point out one inconsistency in the way that I've presented the information. These uh, coloured layers here, you can see I've tried to draw them in a kind of crude pseudo perspective. The idea being that the blue layer on the left is a top layer of three, uh, the green ones sandwiched in the middle and red ones in the bottom. But then the way I've drawn this like vacuum tube around the edge, it's almost as low we're looking at front on. So in fact, if I quickly get this uh, 44 into shots, it's as if the coloured layers, I'm drawing them at an angle like that, but the glass bit, I'm representing it this way around. We'll look at that more closely later on, but that little sort of nipple shaped bit here, that's what I'm trying to draw here. But anyway, what we have is a glass tube within which there's, well, it won't be a perfect vacuum, but they've tried to suck, you know, most of the oxygen and nitrogen out of there via an extraction port. So I don't know exactly how these things are uh, manufactured, but uh, presumably, you know, they suck the air out here and then they put some kind of molten glass on here. And certainly I've had 244s and 246s in the past where I noticed this nipple looking bit, which I didn't know was called an extraction port at the time, had broken off. Uh, that that is just a more structurally vulnerable part of the glass enclosure and so that tends to fail more often. Anyway, inside there we've essentially got uh, three layers of electrical stuff. It can be this is on top and this is on the bottom. I think actually on the MTAX that we're looking at this layer of phosphor coated anode is actually at the top uh, with the filament behind. Um, but in either case you're going to have a grid between a tungsten filament and phosphor coated anode. I think I was looking up it was cadmium coating graphite is what this is actually made of but that's not relevant to us in terms of diagnosing whether the vacuum fluorescent display is it fault or whether the fault lies elsewhere in the system like is it not getting power is the chip that drives it faulty or is it this bit what we do need to know is that there is a filament so basically a couple of thin wires i mean i've drawn four here but i think it could be as few as two and that's got five volts ac going through it and although it's not going to be hot to the touch because uh, this will produce free electrons at a very low temperature, the point is that uh, there's a cloud of electrons, negatively charged electrons that are produced when this filament receives an approximately 5 volt AC. That should be RMS, by the way, root mean square, if you're uh, fastidious about these things. But approximately 4.5, 5 volt AC. And then there are free electrons. They're negatively charged, so they won't Want to go to something positive so you have this positively charged anode so i've represented you know a couple of view bars here one of these displays that's showing the counter and a cassette detect but you know you can put any shapes on there that you want and then you're gonna between those have this grid and you'll have a bunch of grids there's all sorts of multiplexing technology that allows you to kind of cycle through things and use the persistence of vision so that you don't need to have as many pins at the bottom of this thing that I won't describe properly because I don't understand them properly. But you're going to have a number 
number of separate meshes and uh, if you look at them closely they are of this sort of slightly beehive looking hexagonal shape in between and so what happens is when this is heated up the three electrons which are negatively charged want to go somewhere positive so without the intervention of the grid they would just hit this anode and because there's a phosphor coating on that that glows and so without that grid there every printed bit of this anode that's got this coating on it will glow and so the whole display would light up so this will have loads of pins along here maybe i should have drawn that but anyway and usually the leftmost and the rightmost pin are what connects the filament and then there'll be a group which are sending 32 volts DC in the case of the MT8X to the phosphor coated anode and then there will be variable voltages going to the different grids and if that voltage is positive then the free electrons from the filament are going to drain through the, the grid without hitting the anode therefore the anode doesn't glow but if it's negative the free electrons coming from the filament go through the grid and hit the anode and the anode glows so by changing these voltages the system can control which of these lights and give the user feedback so the point of this from uh is it the display that's faulty or is it the rest of the circuit faulty point of view which is what i want to know is that you should have electrical continuity through this filament usually the pins for that are on the far left and the far right and so if you put your multimeter in continuity mode like so then you should get a beep if you don't have a beep that means that's burnt out the other thing to look for is is there still a vacuum in here if this is broken or if there's a crack or a fissure anywhere else then none of this is going to work this whole process requires there to be a vacuum inside this glass tube or it's not going to work but then the other failure condition that I didn't think of and until I started actually fiddling about with my probe is that the pins that are all along here can actually become disconnected from this. I didn't notice this to begin with, but anyway, I'll talk you through the process that I went through to eventually find the broken pins on the MT8X. So the first vacuum fluorescent display that I looked at when I was trying to prove or disprove my theories about how to diagnose these things based on my newly acquired knowledge of how they worked was from this 244. We're looking at the bottom right corner of the unit. The transport would be here and is missing. The plastic case is off. The uh, control buttons and everything would be here. But we can see the exposed counter. And uh, you can see the anatomy of what I was trying to draw fairly well there. The, here's the uh, nipple, the vacuum extraction port up here at the top, the various pins along the bottom. This little metal bit you can see here, I mean, that is actually one end of the tungsten filament. I don't know how well that comes up on this camera, but if you can too, see two horizontal lines across there, that is also the filament. And these little metal indents along the bottom, that's uh, where the grid is going in a fine mesh above the what do we call that? You know, the, the seven, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven segment display, which is will have the phosphors on them. This doesn't actually have a plug attached at the moment, so, because it's, it's been demoted to a spares unit, but I, I do know from my notes that this was working. So I want to see, do I in fact get a beep if I go to the far left and right? And I do. If I use my continuity meter there, then that shows me that the filament inside it is intact. I can't see any cracks or fissures, so if that weren't lighting, then I could feel fairly confident that there was an issue with power getting to this or, you know, driver chip or something, as opposed to the fault being with the VFD itself. Here is the 44 Mark II that I mentioned earlier. It's a lot more complex, it's larger, it must be more grids to do all these different things, you know, the VU for the individual tracks and for the left to right, and we've got, you know, indicator areas for not only the counter, but whether the DBX is turned on or off, uh, the different rehearsal modes, etc., etc. We can see here's the vacuum extraction port here on the right, 
little nipple thing and uh, the pins on this one are actually at the back here rather than at the bottom but we've got a pair here and a pair here it was single pins on the 244 but perhaps that was running off DC rather than AC apparently some of these work with the filament working on DC Again, the plug isn't actually attached to this, it's a spares unit, but I know from my notes that this display was working, so... I get continuity... to either side of either of these pins, and these are the... connected to the filament. Now, I don't know exactly which of these pins I would need to refer to the service manual are... sending power to the phosphor coated anodes and which are sending control voltages to the grid but you know you'd probably be able to look at that up by looking at the service manual of the uh, whichever unit you're working on but anyway that establishes for me that filament is okay there's no break here on the vacuum extraction port i can't see any fissures or anything any cracks or whatever in the glass so if that weren't working I could conclude that the issue was with connecting cables, driver, maybe filaments not receiving power due to like a power supply issue this sort of thing. So here we are back where we started with the MT8X2 by the way this belongs to Adrian James who has the YouTube channel We, we Few Happy Music sorry We Happy Few Music Anyway, so you uh, may even have seen this particular unit being used in some of Adrian's videos. The screen was working when he sent it to me, so you know, I was kind of half wondering that like, I'd done something silly, though I, you know, I certainly don't remember like mishandling the unit in any way. But I, I think what must have happened is just um, the strain, you know, maybe it had something heavy put on it or, or dropped or something um, on its way to me because you know, Adrian's in London, I think I'm in the north of Scotland, and so he had to post it to me. So now you can see that those pins are separate, that's pretty obvious, but for the longest time these were just like pushed up against here flush and you just couldn't see that there was a break there at all so the way that I discovered that um, sorry that's just my meter beeping at me I went to do this continuity test and I was like oh I'm getting nothing I'm getting nothing and then I think when I went over to this pin I pushed it and that pin came away um, so you know if I hadn't been going looking for the continuity test between the filaments which are obviously this pair and this pair here. And I say obviously, maybe it's not obvious. But then when I went to put the probe on this one, then it moved off to the side, and then I sort of, sort of pushed at that and realised that this one had come away as well. Looking at the anatomy of this, I think actually the phosphor coated part is on the top surface here, with the grid in between, but maybe the filament behind. I can't see the filament on this one, but there's our little nipple looking vacuum extraction port there. It's intact. There's nothing obvious about the glass that's broken. Um, there's pins all along the bottom here, but we can see in terms of how it's connected down here. Then we've got a pair here, which is the uh, will be the AC 5 volt for the filament coming in. Presumably those are the grid voltages along here and this is for the anode here. So I've got a little bit of a conundrum here about how I fix this. The problem is that there is metal exposed coming out of the glass, but it's really tiny. I think it's quite difficult to yeah, get that continuity re reading on the brake. It's going to require soldering and I'm slightly concerned that the heat from soldering is going to damage the glass if, it, if the vacuum hasn't already been compromised. So I think the approach that I'm going to take is using this kind of soldering paste. It's designed to melt at a, a lower temperature than what I would normally use. This will melt at 183 degrees Celsius, whereas I would typically have my soldering iron at about 350 degrees Celsius. So at lower heat, I can apply it in a blob both to the, the tip of this wire and to the bit where the little bit of metal contact is protruding. Set my conventional soldering iron to well, maybe 190 degrees Celsius and just place it here until I watch the grey soldering paste turn into shiny metal and take it away and hopefully that does the trick. So the good news is I do seem to have got it to light now. 
I don't know if you can see, but only one of those pins is attached. I won't lift this up just because things are a little bit precarious. I'm wondering why all the meters are showing up full at the moment. And maybe that's just, uh, you know, I haven't grounded something properly and, you know, this whole array is sitting loose. We'll figure that out later. But were I to turn that over, you would see that actually both of these pins are connected to the same track. So I, I don't think that both of them need to be there in order for this to work. I just could not get that to take. The whole thing with low temperature solder didn't work. I ended up resorting to normal soldering methods at my normal heat, but only this one would connect. So I'm just gonna leave that one bent down and hope that that's okay. I can't see any reason why that being disconnected would contribute in any way to why you know, the grid for all of these VUs is allowing all of these meters to be lit at once. I think that's a separate issue. A couple of last things to show you before I finish out the video. First of all, the bars of the VU meters are no longer lit all the time. It was just a matter of reconnecting the earth wire for the mixer section. And second of all, I just want to show you this. What I've done here is uh, strengthened the connection with JB Weld. JB Weld is a two-part adhesive. It takes a couple of days to cure, but once it has done, uh, it's a very solid lump. It's, it's really about as strong as the plastic casing on these things. So that is all the way around that joint and joining onto the glass case. The idea being any force that I put on there is absorbed by this and not by the very weak soldered connection here by my fingernail. Now I have left it open so it could be repaired again if it broke again. But I mean that much force before was causing that to break. So I am confident that it's going to hold now. It's going back to Adrian. If by any chance it does break again, then I will make a note of it in a pinned comment or something just so that people know whether this is a, a strong and durable way to fix this. If that pinned comment isn't there, then we can assume that this joint survived its journey back to London via parcel force. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.